Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick and welcome back to another GTA Online video. Before this video starts, what do you guys prefer with my videos? Do you like live reactions, live commentary like I did with my last video, or voiceovers like I'm doing now? I'm going to leave a poll here and you guys let me know what you prefer. Now let's get on to GTA. Now when we left off in the last video, I had 5.3 million dollars. And as usual, this video was recorded over a few weeks time span and there were some discounts. At the time, there was a nightclub discount, so I bought a nightclub as my first business. Not the best option, but it was on discount and I can buy the terabytes, so not that bad. After I wasted those million dollars, I met up with Uncle Lester at Mirror Park. Lester then told me his life story about how he was bullied as a child and how arcades helped him cope with it. I then said, well what if I start an arcade, and it would just be for him. Lester liked the sound of that, but then some of his childhood bullies approached us. They started making fun of poor Lester calling him a poopy pants and a butt mouth. Even as I watch it from a distance, it was heartbreaking and I vowed to create the greatest arcade possible. I buy an arcade called Video Geddon and go inside. I find a washed up emo Jimmy simping to an e-girl inside the remains of an old arcade. Lester leads me to this old fortune teller machine and opens it up. We head down to this huge space in the basement and Lester tells me that there's a heist we can do. But that's another story for another day. For now, let's leave the heist alone and move on. I then bought the clubhouse which would open me up to MC businesses. If you don't know what these are, there are five main MC businesses. Sorting from best to worst is Coca-Cola, Walter White Party Time, Real Not Fake Money, Fresh Grown and Cut Grass, and IDs for people under 21. Next, I bought the vehicle warehouse, which is pretty much stealing some sick cars and having the repair cost be 20 times more than if you were to repair it at a regular mechanic. Next, I bought a bunker, which at the time was on a big sale and was supposed to be triple money, but Rockstar said fuck you and lowered it to double money. I went to my very discreet bunker just off the highway and started to set it up. The setup mission started with me having to go to Adam's Apple Boulevard. Before that, I wanted to buy some gear. I drove to ammunition but noticed that someone was following me. When I went outside, I found that it was a man in cargo shorts in his early 40s just being divorced and going through a midlife crisis. The man said he didn't like my hat and I respectfully disagreed with him by having a friendly chat and we both walked away. I then went back inside the ammunition and got a bunch of free guns because Rockstar was giving away all the pistols for free that week. I then bought a knuckle duster with an upgrade that was called the Ballas and added some pimp vibes to my knuckle duster. Now I can manage all my hoes and I don't even have to use my actual fist. Obviously, I'm joking, I already have people to do that for me. I went to the location and pulled out my gun, but an SUV rolls over me. Obviously, King is an absolute tank, and it only breaks 63 of his bones and half of his vital organs. I steal the supplies and take it to the bunker, where it phases through a wall. Now that's top tier game design. After the supplies are delivered, I max out the bunker with all the upgrades, and all I have to show for it is that now there's a security guard at the entrance and a bunch of orange tubes on the ceiling so it's clearly worth my 1.6 million dollars. Now after all that, there's this challenge where if you do 10 daily objectives, you get 1 million dollars. I decided not to show some of the objectives I did because they were boring as hell, but one of the daily objectives I got was to do a contact mission, so I started methed up. This mission starts with me having to go to this location where I have to steal an RV, but first I have to kill some hillbillies. At first I was thinking I was gonna go in there, kill the hillbillies, and just steal the RV the old fashioned way by gunning them down. But at the time, I was bored and wanted to get a little creative, you know, torture them a bit. So I shot the first guy and there was a bunch of dudes holed up in a convenience store. It was hard to get to them so I threw some tear gas in the store and waited until they died. I wanted to gas some more guys and so I hid behind a storage container and started throwing tear gas. The guy died but in such a weird way, his whole ass spine contorted and it looked like he got shot. The final guy was a little more difficult but on my second throw I got the cross map tomahawk kill and it landed on his ledge. He fell down and that was the last I ever saw of him. Time to take this RV. I delivered the RV to the guys and finished the objective. The other objectives was buying supplies from my bunker and stealing a vehicle from the military base, which I forgot to record. Now it's time for the main goal of this video. You see, there's an epidemic going around and it started about a week and a half ago. This epidemic is called the Fortnite Kids Invasion. Recently, the Epic Games Store has decided to make GTA 5 Premium Edition for free on their stores. So there has been a massive influx of new players dubbed the Fortnite Kids, or at least that is what I choose to call them. These Fortnite kids decided, hey, it's a good opportunity to get this game without paying for it. Even though they could have just used their mom's credit card like they do with Fortnite, no, they waited right until now. 
So now, in every lobby, at least 70% of people are under level 30. I started by pulling into this soon-to-be drug deal in a stolen car, and you know, I started by being a friendly and all that, you know, just being a chill guy. I was going undercover as a noob. The guy TC said to me, sup, and I replied with the very discreet, you guys knew? The guy TC replied with, yeah. This is when I got a little tense, getting my shotgun ready. I pulled in front of him and asked, got the Epic Games version? My heart pounding faster every minute. Was I going to have blood on my hands? TC replied with, yeah, my heart dropped. Innocent blood was going to have to be drawn. This could not stand. I felt a guilt inside me deep in my bones, but I knew what had to be done. I got my shotgun ready, loaded it, and said, you must die Fortnite, kid, and blow his brains out. I guess you could say, I got the number one victory royale. As I was looking for more Fortnite kids, this guy named... I'll just call him G. G decided that he was going to get in his oppressor and run me over with it. Not shoot me with his missiles, but just run me over. He wasn't killing me, but I also wasn't killing him, because I was not in my tryhard state, and I was just using an AK. I still don't know why I didn't just use an up anatomizer or a rocket or something, especially because he was so damn close to me. Anyways, the cops ended up killing me, and I spawned next to some storage crates. He crashed his oppressor and got off, and I tried to shoot him, but I was caught in an animation. I saw him get back on his oppressor, and so I typed, get off the oppressor, gunfight. He obeyed, but used a rocket, which I didn't anticipate because I did say gunfight. I will be honest here, I let out a little anger, but looking back on it, it was kind of in the heat of the moment, but still cringe. He hit me with his oppressor again and got off, but started kicking the ground and I shot him in his face. He then said, what? Yo Poo teleported. This is where a second person comes in, DK9, which we don't see him much of in this anime saga, but we'll see him a few minutes later. Anyways, Autist on a keyboard came circling back around and parked behind the train. Once again, I went for cover and got caught in another animation, but luckily I whipped the dude with my gun just as he shot his firework launcher. He then got back on his oppressor and I was ready with my up anatomizer because I remembered that the gun existed. As I tried to hit him, he fired a rocket from his oppressor. I didn't even know he had rockets because he had running me over this whole time. I spawned on a bridge where we spent the next few minutes missing each other's shots constantly, and it was a pretty boring battle. This is until he drove right into a pole and got off his oppressor. This is when I started to bully him with my open atomizer, killing him. It wasn't the most honorable way of killing him, but he was on an oppressor. I had the right. Next, I hid behind a wall and shot more rockets, and once again just bullied him with my atomizer. This is when a new character enters the saga, a new foe, Stevo. Not the Stevo you're thinking of, but Stevo. He was also an oppressor griefer. Now the battle was, I guess you could say, a little uneven, with two oppressors and one King Clorox. But not on their side, no, no, no. King Clorox is a king. It says it in his name. He never runs from a fight. This man has the willpower, the strength, and the alien technology that would lead him to victory. The battle was taken to a suburban neighborhood, and while I was focused on Stevo, G came up behind me and almost killed me with his knife. I didn't really know what the plan was, but I stopped it just in time and shifted my attention once again back on Steve. For the life of me, I couldn't hit this man because I had the aim and skill of a blind mental patient. As G came back around, I had a pretty pathetic attempt at killing him, and he easily killed me. It was a minor setback, but still hurt, as this was a truly shit attempt. Next time around, I wanted to get technical, so I hid behind a wall and planted a sticky bomb on a van, and just waited. My plan was foiled when he had the bright idea to come around the other way, though, but still parked right next to the van. I blew up the sticky bomb and watched the fireworks. It was one of my more satisfying kills, as the plan had just worked so well, even with a plot twist like that. Next, as I was trying to figure out where the guy was, he came crashing through the gates and landed on top of me. I had no time to pull out another weapon and just blindly shot and accidentally killed myself. I mean, hey, that's one less kill for him, so I'll take it. Steve then hit me with his oppressor again and died in the process. G killed me once more in his Kuruma and I was on a bad losing streak. I had to get a kill soon, or I was just going to get bullied. I bought some homing missiles and went to town on G. Finally, his Kuruma was out of play. G got back on his Kuruma and Steve hit me with the firework launcher when G came up behind me and ran me over. Once again, kind of an embarrassing death that left me fuming. I was killed once again by G, which he also died in the process in an act of terrorism. It was time to commit several war crimes in Bosnia. G killed me again and started to drive away with his new buddy and said, you're too bleep. To which I replied, me? Like I said, King doesn't run from fights. 
no matter how shit I actually was, and I will give him that, I was doing pretty bad. But I decided to follow them in my buzzard, and I killed both G and Steve. I blew up G and chopped up Steve because I hated him just a little bit more. I exited the buzzard because I just wanted to get that one kill on him, and that's not how I wanted to fight. I prefer the more old-fashioned ground combat. As I was running, I spotted Miss Frizzle on another wacky field trip, but brushed it off as I had some war crimes to commit. As I attempted to kill G once again, this man named Carson came out of the sky and landed on top of me. When he didn't also kill G, and he actually got into the helicopter with him, as well as our friend D Can we saw earlier, I noticed that they were seeing me as the common enemy. I just didn't understand how they could hate such a beautiful face. As they lowered the helicopter to me, I blew up all three of them with my rocket launcher and I realized that I had started a war. This war was four versus one. It was gonna be tough, but I could do it. At least I goddamn hope so. Next they spawned in an alley and I brought my missiles and atomizer because those were fair weapons. This part makes me kind of mad and embarrassed because who the hell brings an atomizer to a 3v1 gunfight? Anyways, I obviously lost that fight and reset. Bond. Steve killed me two more times and it was just so frustrating to have this guy keep killing me from the safety of his oppressor. G got back on his oppressor and tried to kill me, but he wasn't as familiar with the oppressor as Steve was and I shot him off pretty easily and killed him. G then said, that gun is broken, which literally made me laugh. They were quad teaming me and half of them were using oppressors. DK9 tried to come through this tunnel that I was in and I mowed him down with my MG. He did not like this and said, your dog Nick. I really appreciated this from such an upstanding gentleman and I said, TY, love ya. Because at this point, I just wanted to piss them off more than anything. He did not resonate with how friendly I was being and said, how does it feel to be a beta cuck ass bleep? And I knew the perfect response. How does it feel to be quad teaming and losing? Now I know that they weren't technically losing a number of kills, but I just really wanted to get under their skin because they were being pretty toxic. G replied to that with, the poo the fuck are you losing bleep? And I just flat out didn't understand this. I don't know about you, but this is not the English I was taught in school, and so I replied with simply English. Because I just wanted to let him know where my concerns were at. I guess he's sensitive to this kind of stuff because he said, Stafubli. I veered away from the conversation and focused more on the battle at hand. Both Carson and DK9 came around the corner, and I killed them both with my atomizer. Even though I just took on two guys, one in an oppressor, G just got under my skin, and I was somewhat afraid of him because he pulled around in his sedan, and I fumbled. I messed up pretty bad, and he ended up killing me. Steve killed me once again in his oppressor, and I just didn't bother with him anymore. As I respawned and looked around for G, he caught me way off guard and sniped me from above. As I respawned and tried to line up my shot, he killed me once again, and I knew I wasn't going to kill him from just sniping. His vantage point was just a little bit too OP for me to get. In that moment, G became my arch enemy. I noticed as I was having another fight with G that Steve came rolling in with an Akula. This was worrisome as he literally started carpet bombing me. I thought I was going to commit war crimes. Nonetheless, I shot the Akula a few times before I had to shift my attention back to G as he was trying to run me over with his oppressor again. I executed him and faced back to Steve. Steve started carpet bombing me again and the cops ended up killing me because even the cops are more skilled than these guys. I spawned in a parking garage and Geek Kane landed on another garage and I shot his helicopter a few times and for some reason it said I killed him. But hey, I'll take it. I was trying to kill Steve again when G came up behind me. I shot him just in time once again and he fell off the park. What? That was some pretty great game lag. As I refilled on some ammo, I noticed that it seemed to be quiet. Too quiet. I checked the player menu and noticed that all three of those guys had left. It was now me and G, just like how it all started. I messaged G, your friends left, I guess it's just me and you, bae. As the fighting continued for more minutes, I sniped G and he said, finally put the RPG away, huh? I replied with, finally put the oppressor away, huh? And this seemed to be the final straw for G. He said, I don't hate time for you, bleep. Bye. I won. After 45 minutes of fighting, I won the outmatch war. And although I might not have been the greatest or most skilled fighter, actually kinda bad, all that matters is I had outlasted the four. I told you King Clorox never runs from a fight. Thank you for watching this video guys, I hope you all like this new type of GTA video where I take on some Fortnite kids and oppressors, and with that, I'll see you all in the next video.